Thank you for joining us for another episode of Talk Talks, sponsored by Photographer Entrepreneurs Association. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the association, go to photographerentrepreneur.com to learn more about photography business resources, templates, training, and support. We'll see you over there. Hello and welcome. My name is Paul. I'm Melissa. Welcome to Talk Talks. We're really excited to have you here today. Yes, another exciting episode. And guess what? You got us today. So Ooh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we're really excited about today's episode because we are such geeks on marketing. And today we're talking all about social proof. Yes, social proof. Wow, that's like the buzzword these days. And if it's not the buzzword to you, you might not be online that much because <laughs> this is the equivalent these days of seriously, like your reputation. Like before people have a chance to meet you, get to know who you are, have the ability to interact, people are checking us out online these days, whether we know it or not, because you're doing it too. Exactly. You know you're doing it. So <laughs> we're going to talk a lot about social proof today. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but first, we would like to thank um, 17 Hats for sponsoring yes. this episode and always supporting photography education. They're wonderful people, wonderful team over there. So thank you, 17 Hats. Yes, thank you. And um, let's go ahead and get, get started. Let's jump in. So... Before we get even started into social proof it's, itself, let's talk about the concept of not just being a photographer in your marketplace, but being the photographer. Right. So if you think about it, we're in a red ocean. Like there's everybody, like every time we sneeze, there's like five people that pop up that have a <laughs> camera, right? And it's something that we're in a world these days because the point of barrier, like the point of entry, the barrier has been lowered because it's so easy because of digital to actually get that effect, like the effect that we're looking for that has that professional kind of look and feel to photography. I mean, you guys know, those of you that are pros, you know that it's a lot more than that. But it's something, it's like, wow, like 10, 20 years ago when everything was analog, like you really had to know your settings. You had to know what type of film or what type of uh, slider chrome that you would put into that camera. You would know, have to know the settings. And now we, a lot of people can cheat and all the automatic stuff that's happening. Uh, even some of these cell phones now, it's crazy you know, the, what we can get out of them, right? So the thing is, like, we have all this competition and you get into photography. You might have been doing this for a long time and or you might have just you know, had a point of entry of getting in recently. And it's like, OK, every, now you woke up and it's like everybody's a photographer around you. And how are you going to separate yourself? Because when you're blending in, you're now a commodity and everybody's going to compete on price at that point. The idea is taking you from just being one of those photographers, like a photographer in the marketplace to elevating you to being the photographer. Now, outside of photography, even think about it. Like, what are some other products and services that you use? And because of what we're going to be talking about today, social proof, like you go out of your way. You might drive a couple hours to that product or service because of that person or that company behind it, the reputation, the, the, the rumor, you know, like the, what's on the street, what people are talking about, a friend recommendation, like all these things, right? We're going to go through some really great steps today to kind of help transition you from being a photographer in the marketplace to elevating and being the photographer that is top of mind. And this doesn't have to be a generalist. It could be the niche that you're focusing on. Like people know you for blank. And it's very, very you know, key. Because once, and think about it, every time we go to a specialist, then we already know right out the it's gate. It's going to be expensive. We're going to be spending more money, right? And that's what we want as photographers. We don't want to be blending in with everybody and our prices going down. We want to be known for something very specific. And by being that specialist, by niching in and being known for that, it's going to elevate us, which is really, really exciting. Absolutely. So when it comes to social proof, really what we mean about this is just really um, improving your visibility, improving your credibility. And we want to give you five um, tips to really up level your credibility so that you stand out in your marketplace. So you don't blend in. So people know who you are. So when they say, oh, you're talking about that photographer. I know them. I've seen them around and they, they can rattle off everything about you. I mean, one of the things that Paul and I just, it's, it's really funny when we're out and about, people know what we're up to because we put ourselves out there and um, they know we travel. They know, you know, we go to the wineries with our friends. They know about Bentley, our dog. They know everything about us because we, we, we make ourselves that attractive character, that person that they want to do business with and are very just likable and approachable. So with social proof, again, it's establishing that credibility, that likability, and putting yourself out there. Yeah, so think about it. So back in the day, before all this was going on, we really didn't know people when we first met them. Like we, we would kind of, like if you did know them or you grew up with them, 
but you didn't really know the intricacies, like their habits, their, you know, what they do, their lifestyle choices, you know, what they do for their hobbies, with their families and everything. And these days, a lot of us are tuned into that. So I had to say that even though that we do that very purposely in the social media space, it's still on a personal level, it catches me off guard. <laughs> like we'll, we'll be out, we'll bump into somebody and like, oh my goodness, you're Paul and Melissa. And then they'll, they'll start talking, for instance, like about Bentley, right? Mm-hmm. About our dog. And I get caught off guard because I'm like, oh, uh, we don't know you like that. How, how do you know about our dog? You know, and it's like, oh, you know, they follow us like they're, they're there, right? So even though we might not know them or, or what they're doing as much, they have tuned in to us. It's that social proof. Like we are on the radar. And because they are actively following us, we pop up on their feeds a lot more often. And it's, it's sad because in reverse, I'm kind of like, oh, Melissa, who, 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 is was, that? who was that? I need to know yeah. who they are. And I feel bad because I want to know. <laughs> yes. You know, and just unfortunately with the algorithms, we don't mm-hmm. know as much about yeah. So, so what we want to go into now is, is basically five ways to really up level your credibility, get visible and ways that you can really prove on, upon this. So that, again, when you're out in the market, people know who you are and really are um, just drawn to you because of the, the, the things that you put out there, not only with your photography work, but about but about you. Right. So I'm curious, Melissa, what is number Number one. Number one is probably the most important. And this is all about your content creation. So this is everything that you put out about yourself, about your business, about your brand. So when we're talking about content, we're talking about blog articles. We're talking about articles that that you write, like in in traditional, um, you know, uh, pieces of of magazines and publications, things like that. We're talking about behind the scenes videos. We're talking about vlogs, Facebook lives, all your content creation and what you put out in the world and how you present yourself. Oh my goodness, that sounds that so stuff. overwhelming. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Are we going to talk about batching at all? We, we, no, we can, can we talk, talk, about, we talk, we about, talk about that. Okay, <laughs> all right. So here's the thing. When I try to blog like in the moment all the time, 100% failed. And I'm sure any of you feel the same way, mm-hmm. right? It's like I had good intentions. Like every Monday I'm going to wake up after that <laughs> wedding over the weekend and I'm going to write about it and put it, you know, the blah, blah, blah. And Monday would come around, I'd be calling, I'd be on appointments, I'd be doing everything and I'd get distracted or whatever life happens, right? And then the thing is, we have to be, and we'll talk about this more, we have to be consistent, right? Yes. So that the challenge is, is that when you have all these things, it can be really overwhelming. Mm. And the one thing that we learned coming into this year specifically is that we pre-schedule, I'd say about 90, 95% yeah. of all of our social media posts and our blog posts and videos yes. <laughs> so think about it. when you get us facebook live you got us facebook live but at the same time a lot of these training a lot of these videos a lot of these follow-ups you can get in the zone and you can just like boom 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 batch it out maybe do 5 10 you know 15 20 in a day like blog posts that you can have just sitting there waiting to slowly release for you in the future that's true that's and the important part. That's super important. But not only just taking off the stress, when you're consistent, your audience is going to appreciate that and they're going to sure. trust you even more. Right. The problem is, is that when we have the best intentions of writing a blog post or putting a video out or whatever the case might be, whatever kind of content we want to be, we'll do it here and there. We might be consistent for like a week or two and then we kind of disappear. Life happens. We don't have systems in place and we can't keep consistent with it. And then our audience is like, well, where did they go? Like I invested this time, this energy to kind of you know follow this person and, and they're gone. And it, it, again, it, it, it kind of reduces that trust factor because you're like, OK, is this person really legit? Are they going to stick around? Um, I'm following them around, but I, I don't see what's going on. So it not only re- reduces the stress when you batch things out, but it, it, again, it, it increases that likability, which is going to help with rapport with people that you're mean that could be a potential client. And I tell you, you have to look at it, especially if you're doing you have to keep in mind, this is about social proof. This is the impression people get about you before they interact with you. So if I land on your website and you tried blogging, let's say three years Mm -hmm. ago, and you left that all up and I hit your website and I see your work and I'm like, oh, it's blog, a blog. Oh, let me click there. Just see what they're doing right now. And I don't see anything posted since three years ago, right? Because of the dates are typically on these things. I honestly, the, in the moment I'm thinking, are they out of business? You know, hmm, they're not very consistent. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they're going to treat me that way. Like if they, if they're not even keeping up with this, are they going to deliver what I want? So this is stuff that goes on. Same thing with any of your social media channels. Now, I know it gets overwhelming when you try to be all things to all people. So I'm going to give you a really quick tip when it comes to social media marketing. Pick one. One. Pick one. And do it it, awesome. Yes. Do it incredibly well. We get so caught up in trying to figure out how to be in 5,000 different places at the same time. 
And I'm telling you, you might follow, if you're like a YouTuber person, you might follow somebody on YouTube, right? But you typically don't follow them in other spaces. You know somebody that's really good that you follow or several people you follow on Instagram, but you probably probably can't find them in Facebook. You know, they don't update it. Or there's really some people or some things that you follow that are blogs or that are on Facebook, right? Typically, people own one space. And the one thing I can recommend is find out where your clients are mm-hmm. hanging out and be the expert in that social media uh, section. Absolutely. Another thing, too, with content, when it comes to content, not just the things that you put out really, too, but it also can be some of the internal pieces do that, that you have for potential prospects. So if you have them kind of in, in that funnel and you're kind of nurturing that, sure. you know, that sequence, whether it's an email newsletter or just, you know, kind of touch base points, that can be content as well, where you're delivering helpful articles, information, tips and things like that. Um, and again, when it comes to planning all this out, when you leave it to your mind, to just to just that alone, right. you're gonna you're gonna set yourself up for failure because again, there's so many things going on as an entrepreneur. We're out there, we're we're meeting people face to face, and then we're you know doing our work in front um, of the clients, and then we're doing post processing everything that we do. If we leave it up to our mind alone, we're gonna forget something. So systems are important. One of the the systems that we use is Seventeen Hats, and we love them because they have that automation system that you can really, if you have a nurturing sequence with some sort of information, um, an article or whatnot that you can share with you know with your audience, that it automatically goes out to them at certain specific you know times of the of the day, of the year, of the month, or whatever the case might be. Yeah, so this is like having it on autopilot. That's what I love, you know, because it, you know, I used to be, before Melissa came into the business, I told her, I'm like, look, I'm really really busy. I'm out there, I'm networking, I'm doing all the things that, that we tell everybody to do, like I'm living it. And a lot of people come in. But before I had, you know, a, a CRM program like 17 Hats, and that's exactly what we, we dived in ourselves to use, is what happened is I, I had what I call were trash can leads. And that was all these people that contacted, but I was so overwhelmed by doing the work and was in the midst of like sessions and engagement sessions and headshot sessions and traveling and like all this, right, that I didn't get back to people like yeah. I was supposed to. I didn't follow up. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a system in place, right? So what happens is I dropped the ball and it's incredible. How much money do we lose by not having a proper system of following up properly? So we did all this work, all this effort. We spent money on ads or we we were at networking events, all this stuff to create leads to come in. And then we had that, like we were reaping the reward of all the efforts we put out there. And then we totally destroyed it all. Because now we have bad social proof because now we're not getting back to people. Exactly. At least that's what was my, my, my problem. And a lot of artists, we have the issue with that, um, is, <laughs> is following up is not normally one of our strong points. Absolutely. So when you're thinking about um, your content creation, think yeah. about the entire process from sure. you know the actual attracting people to kind of get curious about your brand and what you do mm-hmm. to when you get them kind of in that circle and how you're going to nurture those relationships and how you're going to follow up. That's True. the whole big picture with content creation. Yeah, yeah that's that. And I'm glad you mentioned this yeah. because I feel like so much of us are just focused on just attracting people that we don't have the nurturing aspect. Mm-hmm. Once you have attracted to people, you have to part of this funnel process is you need to constantly be nurturing the relationship because they might not be ready right now or they they didn't quite like they you might have caused something for them to like reach out to you, but they're not ready to buy from you right now. And it's something that you got a long term relationship that you can nurture over time. And who knows, we, I have to say that some of the people that we've attracted, they actually never used our direct products and services, but they referred us a ton of people. Yes. <laughs> and we made, we've made more money on referrals off of people that never used us. It's incredible. It's because we are consistent. We are doing the consistent uh, elements of being in front of them. Constantly. So Absolutely. it's a very important. Yes. So that's a big piece. Let's move on to number two. <laughs> Um, of how to up level your credibility. Okay, so don't, up level. So don't get scared. Uh-oh. Uh oh. <laughs> this it's is all about one. video. Okay, so for those introverted no, uh, photographers no, out no. there, <laughs> they're like, oh my god, I, I don't, I don't even know if I could do that. Video is the place to be, and to start putting your foot into or dipping your toe into it, if you're if you're not quite there yet, it's the best. It's one of the best ways to really connect connect with people. Yeah. So I tell you, here's here's the reality: good, better, and different is that we're in a media gratification world these days. And with, you know, back in the day, we used to say the MTV society, like everything's quicker, right? And it's like, oh my goodness, like fast forward like 30 years now. And we have like goldfish mentalities almost. I I hate to say that, but it's like, (laughs) we need to make an impression in like three seconds or less. 
And the moment, like moving pictures just is that much more impactful. And you guys see it and you're going to see it in the social media spaces. And if you notice, you have Facebook stories now, mm-hmm. you have Instagram stories now. Everything is about more about content rich, which is storytelling. So you need to look at this, you know, and it's interesting because all the internet marketing conferences we go to and what we're learning is they're actually, they're even look, they're even teaching internet marketers to look at the social media channels as exactly that, a channel. Mm -hmm. Like this is a sitcom. This is a, you know, a reality TV show. Like to look at it from that perspective because it's entertainment. Because think about it. There are people that you probably followed initially because something caught your eye, but then they get really technical and they're dry and they're boring and whatever they put out, it's just sell, sell, sell or whatever. And you're like, forget it. I'm not, I'm not following them anymore, right? The people that keep things moving and keep things entertaining and good, better, and different, whether we like it or not, look at the number of videos that are being served to you on all your social media channels. So as you were scrolling through, isn't it interesting that the majority of the content we're seeing now is video, 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 Mm -hmm. video. So are you 007 secret agent when it comes to video? Do you not exist? You know, because I tell you what, this is the fastest way to be able to have voice inflection, personality, be able to build rapport with people, just like we're doing right now. This is, it's amazing when we go and speak at conferences, how people feel like they're our friends because they see us every week and we talk to you, you guys, right? Yeah. And it's like, that's the impression that you can also give to your community. It's so, so powerful. And we need to get you over hiding behind the lens (laughs) and behind the camera. We need to push and get you around the other side. Absolutely. And it's he, yeah. yeah it's the next best thing to, to being in person, you know, yes. and talking face to face. And um, I don't know if you're going here, but um, if you are nervous about video, that's OK. You know, it, it, it's you know, it, it's one of those things that it just doesn't come natural to everyone. And believe us, even as, um, you know, oh, yeah. skilled as we seem sometimes, I mean, my goodness, if you would have watched some of our earlier videos in the earlier days, um, that was quite a doozy. <laughs> a couple of them were quite a doozy. But start off small, um, you know, and you can start off really simple just by showing like behind the scenes of what you're doing. People love behind the scenes. And you might be like, well, Melissa, I don't really do anything interesting, you know, but you'll be amazed. I mean, as simple as showing, hey, I'm, I'm editing photos today. Um, mm. This is what I've got going on. People love that stuff. They love to see what you're doing. They love behind the scenes. They love to kind of get that inside scoop and kind of feel like, you know, they, they have that, you know, that secret pass to kind of see what's going on. Right. It's amazing. Some of the, the most popular videos over and over again that's on YouTube <laughs> are people opening boxes of products. Yeah. Okay, it's crazy. Like, it's a product. They opened it. Okay. But people are really interested. So the behind the scenes is very, very key. We're in, it, we're in a reality TV world. And this might make some of you very uncomfortable. Now, you could have somebody, let's say you're going after senior portrait. You could have somebody that's an intern or somebody that could be the personality or the face for you. Mm -hmm. If you feel that you're insecure on that, you might have a business partner or maybe make the clients that you're interacting with the rock stars. Like maybe you're interviewing them and you're having their experiences and you're going to get testimonials and share things. So if you're not excited about being on the camera, there are alternatives. There are things that you can do to still have that engagement. And I tell you what, we're just going to see more and more of it. Uh, if you look at all the, you know, what's going on behind the scenes, all the social media platforms are going all in on video. Absolutely. So it's something that's very, very important. You got to be relevant. Absolutely. And we're not going to talk about it today, but once you get comfortable with video, there's a lot of super ninja tricks, things that, that we teach of how powerful video can be true. to market towards, towards your potential clients. True. Absolutely. True. True. Yeah. We will, we will definitely cover that for you. Yes. <laughs> so ready for number three? Yes. All right. Trace. So the next thing in this, again, now you're gonna be like, okay, this sounds even crazier than deeper. the video. Um, but writing a book. Okay. Mm. Now, what? now th- th- stay with me here. Okay. Um, when I say writing a book, you think of a traditional book. Well, yes, if, if that's a goal for you, definitely go for it. A book is one of the best things you could do as, from a marketing perspective. It's a business card that's going to stay with you and carry throughout with you on the entire, you know, your entire career. Um, I've written two books and it's amazing having that book. It's got me to a different speaking engagements, different opportunities. Um, it, it just opens up doors for you. But if you're not a writer and want to do the traditional book route, there's a lot of different things you could do. Um, If you're already blogging right now, how about putting some of your best blog articles together in a compilation and doing some sort of ebook? Or, you know, even just a guidebook um, that you could offer toward your clients with best tips on how to prepare for an engagement session or a senior session. 
think outside the box. Think of what you're kind of doing already now and how can you <clears throat> compile that into some sort of manuscript for people to have to give you that credibility. Right. And another piece is like just in your local market. You could do like, for instance, the 50 most influential women in Delaware, like for instance, for us, and you could self-publish a book. Yeah. These days you can go to Amazon, create space, and you can do your own publishing these days. You don't have to wait. Now think about it. That is like a calling card. That is, that is something that's saying, because people instantly feel like you're up another level if you're published. So it's something that the credibility aspect. Now in our local market, I know two photographers over the years. Uh, one, which was a very established photographer, um, he he wrote a book. He didn't write it. He took photos of uh, different key points around the entire state of Delaware, collaborated with somebody that was a local writer, and they published a book together. And it was, you know, one part, you know, actually he did it several times. Then he isolated on cities. Now, what that did instantly, that put him on the radar as like the Delaware expert. And it instantly gave him credibility in the market. And um, there's another photographer that did something sim similar, but they just focused on children. And uh, it's interesting. So just by doing this activity, it might be something totally outside the box and you're totally uncomfortable. But think about the people that you are attracting, the people that you're going after. So let's say that you photograph children, you know, families, and your main focus is on the children. Could you write a book that would just so impress every parent in your marketplace that they would want to show up? and get an autographed uh, copy of it from you and then that puts you in an authoritative position on the topic and again you don't have to be a quote-unquote certified expert in a specific field mm -hmm. you could just get tips tricks tools techniques maybe your book is an annual publication that you put out that is like a compilation like you pull from all the resources that talk about all the kid-friendly things to do in your marketplace and that's the thing it has nothing to do with photography potentially if you want to get creative, you could pull in your photography in it and it could be a silent seller. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of different ways of, of looking at this. Absolutely. Um, but it, it does. You have to understand that. The moment, think about it. The moment that you hear if somebody's up on stage and they're speaking and you hear that they're a two time published author, blah, 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 blah. You instantly are like, oh, they, they must know what they're talking exactly. about. Exactly. It's that. So I'm going to listen <laughs> you know, versus them just being random. OK, so think about it. That is it is social proof technique. That'll give you instant credibility. And I know it's way outside the box, but some of you, which is going to be really cool, some of you are going to take us up on this and you're going to do it and you're going to see how instantly it flips and gives you different new opportunities. I have to say on the local, on the local end, if you're okay, mm -hmm. you all know what I'm going to say. I don't know. Is, um, <laughs> that was one of the doors that opened Melissa up to be on the TEDx stage. Yes. So because she was a published author at the time and since then published a second book, uh, that, that, allowed, that gave the opportunity because again, those organizers were looking to get certain types of level people mm -hmm. that made them look good on that stage. And that's like, again, an instant calling card that totally takes you to a new level. Absolutely. So I, really I, awesome. I can't recommend it enough. Yeah. And if you're not a natural writer, that's okay. There's a lot of ways to go about it. Um, just one little ninja trick for you. You could record your thoughts and then just get those thoughts transcribed. Um, and later put into a written form. So yes. there's lots of different ways that you can write a book. It doesn't have to be overwhelming and it, it can be just really like little chunks of time. Again, these are all ideas to uh, up level your credibility. We hope that some of you, you know, take these ideas and run with them because it definitely is going to put you on a different playing field. Yeah. And by the way, we have an Amazon best selling book. We do. Called Profitographers. <laughs> And I have to say that that helped us get a lot of speaking gigs. Absolutely. So, it works. It does work. Do it. It works. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the next thing, and you're like, oh, my gosh, we're just getting deeper and deeper in all oh these goodness. crazy ideas. Um, but the next thing is speaking. So with speaking of speaking, mm. speaking. So another way to raise your credibility and really build that social proof is to position yourself as an expert in your field. Yes. And speaking engagements are a great way to do this. Um, and you could start off at a, a lot of different levels with there's, there's, again, so many different options you could do. It could be as simple as um, speaking at like a, a chamber event about, about your business or a certain topic having to do that's going to be relevant for the um, other entrepreneurs and business owners in there. You could speak at um, meetup groups. You could speak at photography groups. Whatever expertise you have, you can share that. And even if you're newer to the field, you still have expertise because keep in mind, you're at a certain level that you know so much more than another person. You you got to know, you know, you you know more than another person. So you always there's even if you're fairly new, there's something that you could teach and something that you can share and speak about. Well, you went you said ninja tricks earlier on. 
This is something that I did 10 years ago. When I lost my real estate company, nobody knew me as a photographer. So as I was building up that side, I decided I just start holding shootouts and little mini seminars and workshops on the lighting techniques and camera techniques that I knew. And it naturally attracted a bunch of photographers. And ironically, you know, we talk about this in other spaces, but like one of those relationships uh, was a gentleman that was a part time photographer and also graphic designer. And he recommended us to one of the largest marketing agency clients that we have that we've made six figures over and over and over again from this 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 company. And it all came from us positioning ourselves being in an authoritative position. And what's really interesting beyond that is our two last two destination mm-hmm. weddings uh, that we did, one in uh, Jamaica uh, a little over a year ago and two years ago in uh, Puerto Rico, is those both came from the same events. <laughs> we were doing shootouts and I was teaching a little bit about lighting. And these were the models that actually came to the shootouts. They saw, they were like, wow, well, if Paul is teaching these photographers, mm-hmm. He must be that good. So when I get engaged, when I get married, I have to have him, not these people, but him, because it looks like on another level. Now, we privately coach uh, a lot of mm-hmm. uh, or several different individuals. Um, and we have like one of our um, private coaching clients that we have. Uh, they go and speak at the equivalent of like local, uh, not necessarily chamber events, but um, like the weekly meeting groups, like a BNI mm-hmm. type of, of place. So it, it's a, it's a, it's not exactly BNI, but it's an equivalent. So think about it. You're in a room full of entrepreneurs, and maybe you do headshots or personal branding photography, and now you can talk about how image is important mm-hmm. and how to project yourself in the social media world. So it all ties into the photography. But you can go and you can probably Google and get some really nice, cool tips, and then you speak in front of the group because the one thing that I have found with photographers. A lot of us are, you know, generally introverts and we, we have, we're very uncomfortable to speak in front of room until we talk about photography. Then we can speak to anybody and we just rattle it off and we just get excited. So when we're in our zone, it's so easy to communicate and talk about it. Mm-hmm. So why don't we create topics around it? I've spoken at high schools. Mm-hmm. I've spoken at colleges. Uh, we've, we've both have spoken. Think about this. So every year, Melissa comes because I had this relationship before she came in. But the number one wedding planner in our marketplace, uh, Tiffany Chalk, uh, and you see her a lot because she speaks on the stage for Wedding Wire and, and several others. Uh, she's just local to our market, and she, thankfully she loves us. And uh, she asks us every year. Uh, she teaches at the local college. She teaches a wedding and event planner course, certification course. And we're exclusively the photographer that she asked to come in. So here's a room, a 30, 40 you know, event planners that are going to be coming into the marketplace. And the woman (laughs) says, you need to listen to us. Right. Can you understand the empower, the impact, the social proof that that has, the validation that that has? Because we don't even have to say anything. We're positioned that way because of that relationship and the opportunity. But I have to say, originally, she had a hard time finding any photographers that wanted to help Mm -hmm. out. Uh, Because she initially went to spread it around. And we were the ones that would consistently just show up and get it done. And now we're the only ones that she she calls her. And and people and organizations really do appreciate people that come and volunteer their time to speak and share. And when it comes to speaking, it's all about sharing values, sharing your knowledge, giving and giving and giving. Again, creating those relationships. It's going to build that social proof. It's going to build that credibility. Mm -hmm. It's going to create relationships that's going to just move you know forward and on and on and on to other opportunities. So great, excellent. That's awesome. So the last piece, number five. Oh my gosh, this is getting deeper and deeper. Really intense. And Paul touched upon it a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit in deeper. Is hosting a live event. So again, position yourself as the expert by hosting live events. So Paul had mentioned about um, his experience with hosting shootouts. We're actually coaching um, a, a client right now, and she's planning on hosting some women's only events and really has nothing to do with photography at all but the coolest thing is that guess what all those women in that room are all going to be her ideal client potential ideal clients to talk about issues that are relevant to women and again um, they'll bring their friends and their friends will bring their friends and really building this local community again building that social proof that you're the expert you're the person to go to um, and um, you know and refer to in the future if any of those people need and have a photography so I'll tell you something that we're doing, <laughs> kind of ninja, is that we created a local group called Delaware Entrepreneur, and we have a ton. We have several hundred. We just started a couple months ago. We have several hundred small business owners that are in that group, and we're just nurturing, nurturing, nurturing. We don't p- pitch them. Mm-hmm. We don't sell to them. 
but they see us in an authoritative position because we are putting, you know, pre-scheduled our posts. Yes, we did. So several times a day, there's posts that are going in there that are very relevant to small business owners that are entrepreneurs that are looking to grow and scale their businesses. So, but for us, they're the perfect ideal client for our branding, you know, personal branding, photography, business, and headshots. So it's something that here we are doing something nurturing. So that's kind of like an online gathering mm-hmm. in a way. But the goal is eventually is to take that into a live uh, uh, element uh, as well. So live events are key. This is all about getting out of your comfort zone, mm-hmm. not always thinking about how do I just push photography down people? Because you have to keep in mind that people only need photography during certain life events. So what you do is in between, you influence people when they don't need you. So that when when they do need Mm -hmm. you, you are the number one person. You're going from being a photographer to being the photographer. They couldn't think of anybody else because you're so ingrained in their mind that boom, no matter what, you're the first person, the only person that they think. Like, That's really where we want you to be. Yeah. And when it comes to social proof, again, this is long game. This is building relationships. This is building cre- credibility and um, taking steps along the way to really put yourself out there um, in the marketplace as the expert, as the go-to person, as the person that's going to provide value, value Great. and just giving um, and, and information so that, again, they know who to call. Great. Yeah. Excellent. So that was a lot. So we probably scared you on a couple I of those know. things. I know. Don't be but, scared. But we know that some of you are big <laughs> thinkers. And I'm telling you what. It's that much outside your comfort zone that everybody else in your marketplace won't go and that'll separate you from the crowd. So it's so key for you to take that little extra step, that little inch and do something a little bit more, a little bit different. It's going to feel a little uncomfortable in the moment, but that's where all the rewards are. And we're really excited that you hung with us through this entire lesson and we're really excited to hear what you think yes so please uh comment share make some notes let us know let us know uh, what you're gonna t- do to tell us the- your methods as well sorry yeah so, so let us know what you're doing with your social proof like maybe just pick the one thing and one action item we would love to hear and hear ideas because this is where you know this is where the ideas start start sure. flowing with it so yeah Excellent. So we wanted to say again, thank you to 17 yes. Pats for the opportunity love of sponsoring you guys, the, the training. <laughs> and uh, we love hanging out with you guys, seriously, on a personal level uh, as well. What Just an incredible, incredible team. Um, and we're so excited to keep bringing you Talk Talks. So keep a uh, lookout every week. We have new interviews. And every once in a while, you just get the two of us as well to go deep dive in specific topics. So we love to hear back from you. Anytime you have a chance, drop us a line. This is all about a two-way communication, long-term relationship, social. Social proof. Get out there. So it's on you. <laughs> so I hope you, everybody's doing well. And until we talk again. Stay profitable. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Talk Talks, sponsored by Photographer Entrepreneurs Association. And if you haven't had a chance to check out the association, go to photographerentrepreneur.com to learn more about photography business resources, templates, training, and support. We'll see you over there.